How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. We have a big week for crypto. We actually have some big events happening this week, and they all happen within the next uh, four or five days. I want to explain what they are, what you should be looking out for, how you can take advantage. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. Also, there's going to be a link to Marjax underneath the video where you can start trading cryptocurrency using leverage in case you want to use leverage. That's a great exchange to use. There's also a link to CoinW underneath the video in case you want to start trading Spot as well. You can use CoinW. You can do futures and Spot over on CoinW and you can withdraw to a cold storage wallet if you want to do that as well after you buy on CoinW. Now, I will say, I will say, there's always extra risk whenever you put your crypto on an exchange, so just know that, but you need some exchange to use if you want to trade cryptocurrencies. Now, let's start right here, the earnings releases. And before I jump into this, my my lights flickered off and my internet went off a couple times a couple minutes ago, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. But we have a big earnings week. Last week, we had a big earnings week with Tesla, Google, uh, who else? Microsoft, here we have pretty much the rest of the tech giants, right? So starting Monday, we have SoFi, which is kind of a retail favorite among a lot of investors. PayPal on Tuesday, Amazon on Tuesday after close Starbucks. But let's get over to the crypto side of this. Coinbase, Coinbase on Thursday after close. We also have Block, but Coinbase is going to be really interesting to watch. Last quarter, they actually had a really good quarter compared to uh, the bear market. Let's just see what they did. So they hit their financial goal. They actually generated a net income for the full year of 95 million and a positive adjusted EBITDA in all four quarters, totaling about 1 billion. Uh, they also launched a few new things like Coinbase International Exchange. They also launched Base uh, and acquired licensing, stuff like that. Now they had another big quarter because they rolled out and our custodians are uh or maybe custody they're doing a lot for the bitcoin etfs i'm curious to see i'm curious to see if they talk about like how much they make from that but right now you can see their net revenue did increase last quarter about 50 percent so it went from 623 to 905 their net income actually went from a loss every single quarter for the three quarters before to a positive 273 million and adjusted EBITDA was 305. So for the full year, they were profitable uh, on a net income basis, adjusted EBITDA basis. But I think this quarter is gonna be huge for them. I think this is gonna be much better than uh, last quarter because they have the new products running, but also trading volume has increased significantly this quarter. And we've seen it from derivatives exchanges. It's obvious, trading has ticked up two maybe three x now maybe this doesn't go up two to three x maybe the revenue doesn't but i think they're moving in the right direction you can see consumers trading a significant amount more Ooh, another flashing light um but consumers trading a lot more in q4 of last year going from 274 million uh in transaction revenue to 492 they're just making so much money institutional clients also almost tripled uh from Q3 to Q4. So yeah, I'm really curious to watch this earnings. Uh, also, stablecoin revenue is going up. The stock price has done really well. I mean, over the last six months, it's up 221%. Now, if you compare that to something like CLSK, let's look over the last six months for CLSK, a uh, Bitcoin miner. It's done. Uh, the miners have done generally better than Coinbase. But Coinbase has still just been a monster. And I think if they have a good earnings, which a lot of people are expecting, to be fair, they have high expectations compared to the previous quarters. I think that they will do quite well. Uh, the, the price will do quite well moving forward. Uh, something that I've never seen here. They give little um, like key events. Coinbase slips 20% in the new year as price of Bitcoin seesaws. Shares of uh, Coinbase are up 15% approaching Bitcoin having. That's interesting. But yeah, just be on the lookout for this. This is coming on Thursday. Now we have a big event the day before that. We actually have the FOMC interest rate decision. Now this is pretty much a done deal that we are just going to hold rates, right? 5.25 to 5.5. 
Great for people that have money. Great for people that just want interest at the bank. But not great for people trying to buy assets. However, what everyone will be watching is the press conference, right? Is he speaking bearishly? Because now, now people are thinking, uh, investors are thinking that we're going to have to wait much longer for rate cuts. Maybe next year, some people are saying. So it will be interesting. But that is the next major event this week. <clears throat> of course... There are going to be other things that come up throughout the week. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of Bitcoin news, uh, maybe some FUD. <laughs> there's always stuff like that. Um, in two days, in two days, I saw some people saying in one day, but it's in two days, the Hong Kong ETF start trading. So Tuesday, the Hong Kong ETF start trading. Wednesday, we have the interest rate decision. Thursday, we have Coinbase. Uh, so there's a there are a lot of big events. Amazon also reports on Thursday too. They have talked about using like an NFT marketplace or using crypto as payment. Who knows what happens there? But it will be interesting to watch all these uh, events unfold over the three days. So it could be a pretty crazy week. Keep in mind, long term, Bitcoin is now the hardest money on earth with an inflation rate of 0.84%. Gold is 1.45. Keep in mind that this can go up as well. Bitcoin cannot. Bitcoin cannot go up and it's actually going to go down as time goes on. It's going to go down to 0.42% in four years and then 0.21% uh, and then it'll just become more and more scarce. So yeah, Bitcoin is the hardest asset on earth. I had someone ask me, where do I think Bitcoin could go in five or 10 years? And honestly, that's a very hard question. It's something that I don't talk much about on the channel. I think it's going to go up pre pretty well. Uh, but the hard thing is modeling that kind of exponential growth, right? It's really hard to know what scarcity is going to do to the price of Bitcoin. Like you could easily say $250,000 a cycle. And I'm not saying that definitely will, but I'm saying that no one's going to like balk at you. If, they, if they're bullish on Bitcoin, they're not going to say that that's crazy. Uh, and then what's next cycle? 600, 900, a million? 450, it's hard to tell because you don't know what true scarcity is going to do. You don't know how much governments are going to buy. You don't know how much companies are going to buy. You don't know if the ETFs are going to be put in retirement accounts and people are just going to passively buy them. We don't know what the powers that be are going to do. But if I had to guess, I think we're going to be much higher than we are today, right? I think we're going to be much higher than we are today in a year. We're going to have a lot of bumps in the road there, though. There are going to be a lot of people that try to shake you out of your positions. So keep that in mind. Now, I like this, and I'm going to re, uh, repost this. If you want to see what I'm posting on Twitter, you can go follow me uh, over on Twitter. I'm verified, so it's quite easy to find me now. But yeah, definitely go do that. Now, let's cover a couple cryptocurrencies that are outside of Bitcoin. Cordao, which is actually kind of related to Bitcoin. Honestly, let's let's pull this up. It's a Bitcoin powered EVM compatible blockchain that combines delegated proof of work and delegated proof of stake. Okay, this is really interesting. There's a really good post about this. That I also reposted and liked. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but something that I will say is interesting. Let me pull this up for you. Uh, the price of Cordao has done quite well. Like I, I was looking through my altcoin list and so many altcoins have been cut in half even like smaller altcoins cut in half over the last couple weeks. But Core Dow has done quite well, actually. So you can see, yeah, it went up to $4, but then it came like pretty much right back down. And it's just been bottoming out here for a while. Uh, it seems like it's going to make another big move up. I mean, look at this, a huge move there. It looks like it might make another big move up. It's a pretty large market cap around 2 billion. It's a top 100 crypto. But yeah, even with fear and greed coming down significantly, even with a lot of other altcoins being smashed, this one's held up quite well. Like you can see it just ranging here. So if you don't have this one on your list, I would put it on your list. Now, to be clear, I do hold Cordao, right? This is not a sponsored post or anything like that, but I do hold it. Uh, and I am bullish on it for the next bull run. One other cryptocurrency that I also hold a small amount of is UnityPad. Tyler actually goes into this more in depth. But UnityPad is a way to get access to a launch pad without having to go through and try to claim all the launches, like invest in all the launches. You can pretty much just hold the token 
and they invest for you. So yeah, definitely go over to my Twitter because I'm going to repost this and you can read a lot more about this one's small. Like if they, if they do well on this, if this gets traction, it could, it could go up significantly more than probably Bitcoin or Cordao at this point, because it is so small. But you can go follow me again on Twitter. You can learn more about these. Again, I just don't want to go on for 10 minutes about this, but it's definitely something that you should spend a few minutes on because it could pay off really well. Let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. I actually was planning on doing a Solana, a retire on Solana video here today, but I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to keep that in the back pocket. If you don't mind, though, you know, go follow me on Twitter. You can check out the links to Marjax and to CoinW underneath the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.